Blaze Bailey comes running out. <laughs> and it's this awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chad, hey, why don't you slap a number on this, baby? This is number 193 of Slapcast, hey, y'all. Yeah, since you're slapping babies, why don't you uh, apologize right now? Oh. That's, uh, I'm offended. Sorry, sorry, baby. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, baby. He says that all the time as he's paying them as they leave the the, the, yeah. the, the Smalley mansion. I'm sorry. Um, sorry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, man, it's been a while. I haven't seen you in quite a, quite a while. It's been... Uh, I know. Yeah, it's been a busy week. We had two rehearsals this week. Uh, one just this the same night we're recording this. Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Oh, wow. Cyber Tuesday, yeah. Wow, Cyber Day. <laughs> uh, so for you know a month where we haven't had a lot of shows, we've been keeping quite busy with other stuff. Yeah, so oh, we started a new podcast and stopped eating children. You know, <laughs> sorry, drinking their blood, Chad. Oh, yes. How do you feel? Do you feel I, I'm hanging in there, yeah. yeah You're I'm hanging in there? A little, a little shaky. Like, <laughs> yeah, such, and and, how, and how's your other podcast going? Oh, it's fun. It's not called Cybercast. What's it called? It is called Prodigious Saps. Bozy, bozy, yeah. bop, zilly, bop. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, yes. Yeah, we were, we're talking about it because I gave him shit about his uh, his weight loss videos. It's like, hey, I'm going to be doing this uh, every day. And yeah. um, now that it's two years later, here I am again. <laughs> so I'm going to give you shit about it until you keep it up. So, uh, so good. Well, I, have, I, bet, I actually, I'm about to put, put up a new video tonight. So. Well, I guess it is the third year anniversary of your second yeah. year. Singing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it has been crazy busy. It's been, uh, it, it's been uh, silly around here. I'm actually heading out of town here in a minute. So I wanted to, uh, uh, I wanted to get this done. Wanted to check in, see how everybody's doing out in Slapperland. We were working on, we're reworking a song that we did a couple of years back. Uh, I think it was, oh, it was last year. Christmas 2020 is when we did it. Yeah, yeah, two years ago. That's right. That's right. Never. Yeah. Infallible. Uh, inflatable, infallible. And uh, so we're reworking the song. Um, of course, it's been, we're changing it up. I actually really like the, I really like the uh, new kind of feel that this one has. It's kind of, so uh, a couple of weeks back we were talking about, because um, we do Christmas songs year round. You know that. If you've been to a show, you, you, you know you know that's what we do. But we, uh, Turbo, Chad, and myself, just kind of did a little something different to Every Day is Christmas. And uh, if you, uh, maybe you put this in the, put a link to it. You can check out the, the yeah. check out the song. And because we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, br- we're going to be bringing it out here in a, next week, actually. We're going to be at, at Dry Creek uh, down in Richmond. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably know it. Yeah, it's got the Merch Maiden Mansion down there, and um, it's uh, it's a beautiful venue, and the weather's been just outstanding. We, we you know, Gosh, the yeah. we haven't had rain. It's just been heavenly out there. Yeah, and uh, I think the mosquitoes have even t- gone on on holiday. <laughs> I think they've all gone to Cancun for the holidays. There's, I mean, it's just it's yeah. it's, it's like Sandy, but it, it's nice and. Uh, so we're reworking. We're reworking actually quite a few songs, and mm-hmm. it's been the first time that we've we've uh, we've really kind of dissected that. Yeah, I was joking with Kevin. We threw him in the van, much like we do Heidi. You know, it, it's uh, it's you throw in a few a few little candies, you know, and then as they turn to get them, you throw kick them, push them in the van, lock the door, and you drive as fast as you can. Then you just go. That's how you go on tour. <laughs> Go, 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 go. So, yeah. So, uh, we t- realized that while as we're playing these songs, we were adding new songs to the, we are adding new songs to the repertoire. Mm-hmm. But as we were learning or, you know, uh, warming up on other songs and whatnot, we realized that we had just thrown these poor, unsuspecting victims in a van, <laughs> taken them, you know, on the road for two weeks. And realized as we got up there, we just learned the songs, you know, just flat, you know, start to finish. That's it. Next one. Start to finish. Next one. And there's, we took a lot of the dynamics out of the song, a lot of the kind of the, that, that, that blackguard style that we have going. I, I say blackguard style because what we like to do is we like to do some tempo changes, a lot of field changes, use a lot of dynamics and 
we just just like the the, the band to really work together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we we throw a lot of curveballs at the audience. I like to say, and yeah, the, those, those curveballs are more effective when we're all throwing them at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, why that's why rehearsal is useful. Yeah, so we have a little bit little bit more of that sort of thing in our arsenal on stage. Yeah, like pennies at a strip club. You know, you you you, 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 <laughs> you don't want them to ride you, but um, yeah, so that's exactly right. And and so we realized that these songs were just kind of, you know, the, all, all the edges had been filed off and it's just, you know, kind of these bland pieces. Of, anyway, so we st- started to dig into these into these songs and realize that we could change them up. And Kevin's been dying to put his, you know, he's been dying to, to, to A, get to know these songs because mm-hmm. we really, at the pace that we play them and the, and, and the, you know, the amount of shows, you never get a chance to really put your you know, put your mark on them. So we've been, we've taken them, taken them apart, put them back together and mm-hmm. it's been really fun. And so yeah. what we're going to do is if uh, I wrote this song, uh, every day is Christmas uh, in 2020 and you know, there was lockdown, there wasn't anything to do. So we really never got a chance to play it. So now we really had a chance to, we, we, we were going to use this time, which we are using this time, this downtime to, kind of rework the set list and put some stuff in there, bring back some older songs, add some new songs, but also kind of put the screws to some of these songs that we wanted to, you know, we, we, we didn't know how every day is Christmas is going to go, you know, how we're going to play it because we'd never played it. And so mm-hmm. uh, I just, I, I think we put a couple of little, you know, new things in it. And uh, I just think it's a, I, I think it's a whole new song. So yeah. if you would, if you would, uh, you know, our fine people here on, uh, Slapper cast, if you just give it a listen for us and, uh, you know, tell us what you think. And then if you come see a show, we, we will be, we will be putting out, especially on Patreon, we'll be uh, mm. putting out the first garage recording, if you will. We'll be doing that and putting that out. And then, uh, then we'll be taking it out as well. So we're going to be playing it. It's now Slapper Day Tuesday, end of October ish. We're going to be playing it now from October, November, December, obviously. So anyway, you, you know, give it a listen and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about it. The really, really, yeah, really, really good feel. I still, I, I, it was, you know, one of my. It was kind of early, it was early on, and the well, I won't say it was, I guess it was midway through the, the sessions for Pragmatic, and it was just kind of exciting because it was a, it was kind of a, it, it was an idea that had been knocked around for a long time. Just the just the idea of the chorus was an idea that you'd you'd shown me years before. He's like, hey, what about this? Yeah, that'd be cool, <laughs> and then. It's like I forget when it was like in the space of a week or something. You, the rest of the song suddenly spilled out of you in the middle of the, of the album recording, and then we kind of went over it briefly. Say, hey, check this out. Cool, cool. All right, let's go. And it was very. It was kind of like a lot of the a couple of other songs now, like Sweet, Sweet, Sweet Sixteen. You wrote, and I think we were you wrote it, and then we recorded it the same week or something like that. And uh, El Paso, well, the lyrics took a long time, but that came together pretty Shut quickly up. in the studio as well. <laughs> What was the story? I think you maybe we already joked about this, but the thing that Bobby Bobby V yelled at you from across the the street says, "Hey, you're not rewriting the words to Light of Light El Paso, are you?" Was that? Yeah, <laughs> this is my favorite Paul Beebe story. Yeah, he you see he was laughing. Now I burned his fucking house down. Yeah, <laughs> now he's living in his, in his in his little van. Now by the river. But yeah, we yeah. uh um Bam. yeah that song that was always a pain in my. But actually, we're even reworking that one. Yeah, Light El Paso, which was. If anybody's ever listened to Marty Robbins before, that's nothing to do with that song. Although it's completely ripped off from a, an idea, you know, the, that that lights of El Paso. But it, it it's going to be it's going to be a whole new machine now. The way that we're the way that we're uh, not me, yeah, you know. But it really is. It's a whole new uh, engine, a whole new body. It's a whole new you know construction now. I, I think yeah. you know. Do you think, because uh, we, I know we, we've been talking for a while about re-recording that one, uh, Lights of El Paso, in addition to the Christmas song. What do you think? Well, we've, we, we had talked before about actually redoing a couple of the other songs in Blackmatic as well, which I know this is, this is not what people want to hear. They want to hear, but you're supposed to do new songs now. But <laughs> Yeah, well, we, 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 like I said, we have to play, we have to play this, the songs the way that, we, that we're going to play them. Um, I wrote the songs pretty much as we were, recording them you know they were they were they've been ideas for a long time but you know when they're shoveled into a bag 
you know, and the bag is shaken and then you empty it out on the floor, you put those pieces together, you, you know, you're putting them together as a, as a, as a moment, as that moment in time. Mm-hmm. Now we're at a different moment in time. And, and e- even Sweet 16, which was a little bit, it was very rushed in the studio, but also, but now it's, it, it's one of those, the, the lyrics don't make any sense to anybody but us. Right. And, but the song, I always thought the song was kind of groovy, kind of, you know, kind of, uh, and it just needed a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. Focus. Right. So we so, didn't, yeah. Well, you, you were saying this about a lot of, a lot of the songs in that record is that we hadn't lived with them really long enough. Yeah. And that, that one is so almost no, all the new ones. Out and, yeah. There's nowhere to take them out and yeah. see how they're going to go. You know, right. If, yeah. You know, anybody yeah. listening, you know, uh, many of our friends are, are, are artistic, you know, it, it's funny and this could be a whole new, a whole episode on its own, but it is very funny how some people that we know, uh, a lot of people that we know that just seem like they just like the music. They're actually a lot more in tune with what, how we write and perform and whatnot. Uh, it just, it, it blows me away when I, you know, it, it sometimes even just feels like it's mandatory. Like people have to say, uh, hey, you know, good show. <laughs> right. Was it, you know, did yeah. you, were, were you on your phone? Were you, I mean, were you really paying attention? Yeah, but the yeah. amount of people that know what is going on, that's when it scares me because you, you can name people like, uh, you know, I, I know Larry plays. I know uh, uh, Kate Scott. I know she's an artist. I know um, Greg, uh, Fugate and Sharon, they're huge music fans. They go places in music that I would, oh, okay, I, I just wouldn't peg them for. Lori, uh, just, you know, people that claim that they don't know anything about music, and they do, and they're extremely musical. Mm-hmm. You know, Julia's another one. It's like, how did you how did you know that? How did you, you know, it's just the, but music means so much to, to people, you know, it's such a uh, and again, it's you know, we, you know, we kill songs, and of course, the lovely uh, Kelly Navarro. It's like fuck you <laughs> what? every week, yeah. every week, uh, and and we only do that because every time that she does that, she scares the deer away in her garden, and then she has to wait for them to come back. So, but it really is. It's quite uh, humbling when you hear how people listen. You know, not only how much they listen, but how deep they've embedded themselves in the, in the process, you know, in, in our process of, you know, wow, I heard that song the first night. That's not even the same song anymore. You know, we, we, you know, which Mm -hmm. is, which is, you know, we're trying to play these songs now the way that we want to play them today. It's not just going to keep, you know, yeah, it's not going to keep evolving, but it it, it is definitely going to, you know, it's going to evolve, you know, you leave a rock outside the door, you know, it's, it's going to, you're not going to notice the change every day, but you know, with the cold and the heat and the sun, the rain, the day, you know, it, it is changing. And yeah. It, uh, yeah. We, we've talked about it before, but our, our, our arrangements do change just like the way you're saying, like if you, you, there might be a song that we don't think we've changed much. If you go back and listen to it from like 10 years ago, it's oh, yeah. practically unrecognizable. Yeah. Yeah. Even just the live album, uh, which we never <laughs> deliberately never listened to. But you listen to like how we did Liverpool back then on that record. Sounds nothing like the way we do it now. Um, anyway, yeah, it's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, but it, it, it it's uh, yeah, it never it never ceases to amaze me how many people will say or how many people will you know like I I say the, the lyrics in Sweet Sixteen, nobody understands. And I, I've been I've been uh, corrected on that. A few times as well, I've had people say, hey, "Is that what you? Is that what you make it?" I go, "Yes, it is." Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I, I must, uh, I must heighten the ambiguity. I must. Uh, <laughs> well, cool. Do we do we have uh, songs to kill? Are we, are we ready to do that? Oh, we, we're always ready to kill songs. Yeah. Are you ready? You look like are you're you? ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not so excited about my choices today because we, um, just they're fine, but yeah. I, I always feel like I could do better with the killings. Um, I was in the, uh, uh, I was at my local H E B right before we recorded this. And What's H E B? Is that is is, is that a hepatitis? 
Yeah. H-E-B-3, H-E-B, H-E-B-17. No, it's, it's a, H-E-B is a huge, or most of our listeners know this. It's a huge grocery store chain in Texas, probably the biggest chain. So I was in there and over the, the, the speaker, I could hear uh, Paula Abdul's uh, straight up now tell me, you know that one? Oh yes, I know it very well. Yeah, yeah. And I've never really thought about it before. And I, I wouldn't have thought about it if I wasn't trying to think of some song to kill. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll kill that one. <laughs> it's just, just because I was thinking of that when I, when I was walking to the store. I was like, I bet you there'll be something in, playing in, on, on the stereo there that I can uh, Well, I isn't can her voice very much like Gloria Estefan is where it's very it, – it, it just feels like it could, be, it could be flat and they just produced the shit out of that track? It, yeah, and I, it's – it's one of the reasons I feel bad for for choosing it because she's not really a musician. You know, she's she's she was a dance choreographer who who got you know pop career, and she's a nice person. I, I don't have any per, you know beefs with her personally, but but uh, you know I, she's kind of innocent. She's I feel like she's she's kind of innocent because she's not. She probably didn't write her songs, and she's not. I, I don't know. I'm probably not giving her enough credit. <laughs> oh, oh, but, uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, anyway, it, she, it, it's not a, it's not a good, it's not a good song. But I am um, like a lot of the Prince stuff. I, I, I ask myself this a lot of, the, a, a lot of time, and that's terrible to put her and Prince in the same sentence. And I, I yeah. you know, I purposely apologize. But uh, you know, I, I thought to myself too, if some of these grooves in the Prince song weren't as infectious as they, you know, if you know. Uh, how great would these songs be if those so you know if, if, if they even fucked up the groove just a little bit you know if they even took some of the you know if if, if, if the beat wasn't as infectious or what you know so mm-hmm. that like that song that Paula whatever song like it or not that song's got a thump in it you know and it's got a you know yeah and there are much worse songs out now. I just don't know what the names of them are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we don't listen to we, we we don't hang out in those in those uh, put on women's clothing and hang around in those bars. Yeah, but, uh, and I, just, I do have the hand at HEB that they they do generally play fairly decent music in their stores, which is you know, like like Picture Book by the Kinks and things like that. Yeah, you just wouldn't really expect to hear in a grocery store. Yeah, so good, sorry, Paula. Good deal. <laughs> okay, well then 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 resurrect or shine a light. All right. Uh, this is actually one that I selected in, a, in a, a round of guilty pleasures that we that we're, we did with the Nanias last summer when we were there for the uh, the Omaha trip. I think that's what it was. Anyway, we, we were going around in a circle and, and picking songs that we felt, you know, at least slightly embarrassed to, to say that we were still fans of or fans of it all. And one of them I chose was Voices by Russ Ballard. Do you know that one? No, I do not. I remember you said, but I don't remember. Yeah, you really don't ever hear it on the radio, but it was it was a song that I knew from the Miami Vice soundtrack that uh, a good friend of mine at the time uh, introduced me to. And it is, you listen to it, it is total 80s cheese, but I love it because of that. It's just like big, heavy drum sound, uh, kind of these really kind of silly, cheesy synths in the background. And... Uh, but Russ Ballard was a uh, songwriter. He wrote, the, I think the song probably most people would recognize right off the bat was the song that uh, he wrote for America, which is not one of their best songs. Like, you can do magic, da, da, da. you can do yeah. anything that you deserve. Very middle of the road. Music. Yeah, that was Russ Ballard. But Voices is is different. It's it's a little bit more, a little bit more rocking. And I just I just really dig the song. It's It's got an interesting groove and the... Some, it's an 80s song that I, th- I think more, more people should hear. Give us a couple of bars in your usual hey, um, hey, voice. Yeah. Voices. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, I just love the shit out of that song. If you listen to the whole song, though, the the worst part of the song is the very end. There's this really cheesy synth patch that comes at the very end. Goes, it just goes, ba 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 ba. It's just like the kind of ending you do when you can't think of anything else. But uh, the song is great. The drums the drums are great. Uh, the guitar, guitar work on it is great. Russ sings it good. So, give yeah. it a listen. Okay, I dig it. Well, the one I want to kill is uh, is it, there's a there was a there was a Michael Douglas movie uh, from I want to say the nineties. I'm pretty sure it was the 90s, I think so. But it was called Falling Down, and I saw it because it, they showed all the action movies in the clip, all the all the action parts. Excuse me, of oh. the movie in the clip, and it was just quite terrible. <laughs> uh, and it's just one guy just losing the rag. He just he just 
you know, wit's end. And, uh, you know, the day just goes from from bad to, to the, you know, the, the, the worst it could be. Well, Iron Maiden have a song called Falling Down, and it's sung by the incomparable uh, <laughs> Ace Baby. Oh. <laughs> and uh, it really is. He's singing flat the whole time. The band is, the, the band just sounds like they just did not want to be there. And it's a, uh, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of uh, quite awful. And it just doesn't even sound like them. It's just cause it just, and you, you know, um, I think it was the week before last, you killed the song by Iron Maiden. Uh, yeah. Heaven just, can wait. Yeah. Heaven can wait. But, but, but it's the, uh, heaven can wait, heaven can wait. Well, this is falling down, falling down, falling down. <laughs> that was it. And the, Whole, and it never fucking ends. It never <laughs> fucking ends. Who wrote it? It was probably written by the same member of the band. Do you, remember, do you know? I think I think Blaze Bailey wrote it. Oh, we're well, not having to wait though. But who, no, who no, wrote? no, Heaven can wait. No, uh, I think that I was, was Harris, Harrison. Uh, was it really? Oh yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that was one of the. That was one of the. <laughs> I was just going to the courses sound similar. I was just wondering, was that written by the same person? Yeah. And then uh, just being a fan, you can always kind of go in and pick something out. And it's one of those songs you just can't let play long enough to, to find <laughs> that spot. <laughs> and it's, that's unusual for me. So, yeah. uh, and so that was, that was one that was very easy to, to get rid of. But when you, whenever you talk about blaze, I always think about that clip that you, we, we were sending it to each other and laughing about it years ago. Of a, It's a clip of uh blaze performing with Iron Maiden during whatever those brief couple of years he was with them in the nineties in some small club. Cause you know, when, when Bruce left, that was, yeah, the, that, he, that was, the, that was the one that I went to. Right. And they, they, so they were touring smaller clubs cause they just couldn't get, they weren't selling tickets, I guess, in the bigger venues anymore at that point. But <laughs> there's a clip of blaze doing, uh, the trooper with, with Maiden, and he can he could not sing that song. He had changed the, the, whoa, he had changed that to something that was a, a lower register. It was like, oh, it, it's, I can't even remember. I don't remember wh what it was. It was something horrendously bad. Yeah. So he, <laughs> so he went, he, he played, uh, so Bruce, you know, does the high register, you know, the, uh, and he literally changed it to like, like, like somebody stabbed him in the back and ah! And it was, it was, it was, uh, you know, if, if, yeah. if you watch it, you know, you uh, straight across, like, you know. But what it made it would be even better, this video is that he's having an argument with somebody in the audience in front of him that you can't see. So he's like, whoa, fuck you, I'm going to get you, man. Whoa. And yeah. Steve comes up next to him and goes, yeah, fuck you. We're going to get kick your ass, man. Get him. <laughs> Whatever it was. And I was just picturing the guy in front of him going, boo. Yeah. <laughs> Giving him a thumbs down or something. So, so I, I saw them when they came through Houston. They played in the club up north, and I cannot remember the name of it. I'm sure it's gone. I, 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 and forgive yeah. me, I've told this story before on here. The, I remember standing outside, and, and actually this is a two-part, uh, a two-fold thing, because uh, uh, today is Tuesday. So last Thursday, I went to see a band called Yes at the Arena Theater here in Houston. Uh, yes. Yes, I thought, you, I, I thought you didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so these these are kind of connected, kind of sort of. So when I went to see Maiden, so uh, all right for 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 all of you who don't know, there's a band called Iron Maiden, and they play a little bit of metal. They're from they're from they're from England. They're, they're just they've been around since the late seventies, and they are uh, easily one of the best yeah, metal bands on the planet. They, they they just wrote the book, you know, and uh, that's that's all you need to know. Well, and then f f th th they've been through many many lineups, which of course Chad and I can you know we can you know we can commiserate you know let you know understand the the difficulties and whatnot. And mm -hmm. so in the nineties, anyway, they, they, and they just they they had conquered the world. They have played to you know as many as you know. You know, just hundreds of thousands of people at these, you know, the rock and reels and the these massive shows, and they've just they've toured the world. That they're they're they've just there's nowhere that they haven't been, and there's nowhere that they can't go back to, and oh, you know, just tr huge, and 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 all with no airplay. You know, they've they've had little to no airplay whatsoever. So all that's pretty commendable. 
And then, uh, you know, as bands do, once they, they reach that certain, you know, they reach that plateau or they reach that point where they're either going to start to go down or they're going to start to bicker and fight and squabble and, you know, they, they, they never really seemed to do that. But they did, you know, Bruce wanted, the singer wanted to go off and do his own thing. And the other and the, the other guitar player, Adrian Smith, wanted to go off. So they hire another guitar player and they hire another singer. And when you hire a singer, like we've talked about this many, many times, you know, ad nauseum here on, but if, if, uh, if you hire somebody to come in and replace Freddie Mercury, he, he should be able to sing or she, but they should be able to sing, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody and probably, you know, a couple of the hits maybe, but, the guy that they got to repla replace Bruce in Iron Maiden couldn't really sing much past, you know, the opening of Revelations or the, you know, the the, the, mm -hmm. the beginning of Wrathchild or the beginning of, you know, there's not much. And, 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 and if you can't get past a certain, you know, uh, note range, you really can't be in a band called Iron Maiden. But they, I guess they thought they could get away with it. So they were taking crucial parts out and we've we, we we've spoken about this as well too we're not chad and i are not big fans of the song the trooper uh, i'm not a fan of it just because i've heard it so many fucking times and it's not one of their best it's not even close to one of their best but it's one of those songs that was huge with the audiences so they kept going i digress so we're in houston texas it's the 90s sometime and they they came through town with blaze bailey and yannick jairs their 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 uh their guitar player uh, that that replaced Adrian is there mm -hmm. a, a Dave Murray. They've always been a, a, a double sling, a double lead guitar slinging band, uh, and and they can you, we have Thin Thin Lizzy to thank for that. Yeah, they have Thin Lizzy. So I went to see them, and th there there was back in the day, back in the nineties, the new thing was the Intellibeam, which was this uh, uh, basically a programmable laser looking light. And I knew this only because we went into the club and far off in the corner of the club, there was all these boxes of IntelliBeam lights. So they had purchased them at a store and they were going to box them up at the end of the night and bring them back. I mean, it, <laughs> it, was, it was that kind of a show. This is yeah. the band too that, that, that has something like 40 18 wheelers bringing their show that their, 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 their stage show takes days to set up sometimes just obscene the amount of you know gear that they have uh, not in this club not in this club so we we came to see them and whatever the opening song was of the opening whatever record they were promoting it's usually the first song and they come running out of the stage and everybody's losing their minds and this is a small club i can touch the ceiling it's that small and the stage is not much, you know, not much bigger than if you know the Continental Club in Houston, Texas. It's probably two and a half, maybe times that stage, maybe, and it's not as high as the one. Anyway, yeah. so they come running out on stage, and the bands just kick in, and it's just, and it's, and it's kind of wonderful. It's kind of, yeah, yeah, amazing to be in there. I don't know if anybody else has had this dream before, but I've had these dreams where I've been in the the same. Uh, or, you know, like a, like a, a sold out or an arena that should have been sold out and it's you and a couple of other people and the band are playing. I've had dreams like that before where you're like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Hey, do you guys know uh, Sweet 16? So, uh, uh, so the band comes running out, everything sounded great and the, you know, and Telebeam's going crazy. There's all lights everywhere and it's, a, you know, for a small club, it's pretty big and it's packed. It is packed. The club is absolutely beyond packed and blaze bailey comes running out <laughs> and it's this awkward <laughs> <laughs> because he comes running out he's like yeah yeah and and, and people are like looking around him because they don't <laughs> they don't want to they don't want to they don't, they don't want to see him and they don't want to yeah they're like wait wait, wait I, I can't see the drum the i can't see the mic stand that's holding you know that's 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 micing the drum i can't see the you know the, i can't see the the, the the crease in the carpet i mean they're just looking everywhere except him and and i i felt so bad i just felt so bad for for him because he's 
you know, if, if you're going to play with Maiden, you're going to be energetic. You're not, you just don't stand still. Nobody stands still. You, 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 everybody's in. It's, it's a show. Yeah. And oh my God. And he just could not get away from, <laughs> oh my God. They wouldn't have missed <laughs> on him if he was on fire. It was awful. So, <laughs> the, so the connection between that and yes, the concert that I went to see at the Arena Theater in Houston, Texas last Thursday was the people that come to see that show are all the same age. And I, I think they all made a phone call. They all said, hey, we're going to wear a black T-shirt. We're going to tie our hair, what's left of our hair in a ponytail, and we're going to rock. And they went to see <laughs> yes. And uh, Steve Howe is late, mid, mid, late 70s, great player, uh, drummer, decent, keyboard player, amazing, uh, singer, eh, okay. Okay. Bass player, very good. And yeah. song selection, I'm picky. Yeah. I'm picky. Yeah. But, uh, and, and you, uh, let, let, let me just clarify this. The Yes fans loved it. My Yes fan, mm -hmm. uh, definitely appreciate what they've done. And, uh, you, 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 you know, you gotta, you've got to take your hats off to the musicality and you've got to take your hats off to the, what went into writing these tracks and performing these tracks. And th this is not just getting up there and, you know, just molesting Freebird, you know, till, you know, for, for, for 25, these songs are just Im impossible to, to, to read yeah. next to impossible to read. really, yeah. you know, epic. Steve Howe might be the only original member left. I don't think band. he was even original. Didn't he, didn't he start later? But possibly. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least from the classic lineup, he might be yeah. the only one around because the, the bass player died. Drummer just died. John Anderson quit, right? Or he was fired or something, right? Because yeah, it wasn't John Anderson singing, right? It was somebody no, else. No, it's uh, yeah. it, this guy's only been with him for ten years. Uh, okay, but again, not a fan, not a not a not a yes fan. But it, you know, it, it's kind of funny to watch the to watch the audience. And one of my favorite people in the world is in college to go to. Uh, for, she's in college for. Uh, Music therapy. Let me let me just tell you. Let me just tell you for free. This is no charge. Seriously, people at home, put down your checkbooks. We don't need it. This is on the house. That music therapy. That is some serious shit. Because I saw people get you know with uh, having tremendous difficulty getting to their chairs and getting into their chairs. And yet, but once that music started, every ailment was out the window. Wow. And it's just something to behold when you see people that are, are, you know, you know, let's just call it in their, in their, their later years. And, you know, but mm -hmm. that was, that's something else. And that band had them on their feet. So, you know, all right. I want to thank Bob and Mike and turn to production for the tickets. And I want to especially want to thank Keith York, our, our good friend and drummer extraordinaire. One of the, uh, Cause he just gave me the rundown. We spoke until two, two, we're on the phone till two or three o'clock in the morning after the show. And he's like, <laughs> God dog, you're back. <laughs> he was, uh, he's great. He's absolutely great. And he's such a fan. He has, he had notes to talk. You know, he had questions that he brought to the arena theater. Cause he was going to ask the band and he didn't get to. So all that said, do I have a song to kill? Yes. Yes, I, I've killed that song. I've killed that song. Uh, next week is going to be fun because I'm going to kill a whole catalog. Boys okay. And boys. boys and girls. But uh, so I revive a song. Uh, it was a song that I was listening to, um, yeah, today. Well, it was today. So uh, um, I've been taking a, 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 a an LP, a vinyl uh, record out of the, just blindly mm -hmm. taking it out of the collection and putting it on, and still by the Commodores came on today. Oh wow! And I, I, I don't know what the fuck it is about that song, but it can give me goosebumps, and it can just make it can just take knock the wind out of me. That song I, is just stunning, and it's just you know played at the right volume with the the uh, with the one thing I will say I, I still love listening to vinyl. I still you know I still get a kick out, but you can't listen to it like you would a CD because I listen to it for shit loud, and uh, the vinyl when you have it past a certain level, there's a hum. And then, then of course the hiss of the needle and whatnot. And it's just on the system. I have it just, it's way too, it's, it's nearly overpowering the, you know, even during the song, 
But I got to tell you, the clarity of that song, the warmth of that song, there really is, there's a nostalgia that brings you back to that area, uh, which speaking of bringing you back and nostalgia, we need to, to, to keep that thing going. I, I talked about songs that oh, yeah. transport you, songs that, especially if you're, you know, 87 years old like I am, if you, you can hear a song and it can transport you to back to that time or to another area. But that, that song by the Commodores has power, has major power, and it just really shifted me back to a, a really, 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 a, I, I don't know what it was at that time, but it had to have been something powerful because it, it, it's very moving and, and tremendous record. Uh, was that that was Lionel Richie's band? Was that yeah, 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 yeah? Was that one that he wrote? I'm pretty sure it was. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a. You know, I'm only a. I'm only a fan of the, the 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 music. I didn't know the players. I didn't. I never did research on them. But yeah, Lionel Richie. He was writing all the songs, and it was all the hits that was that was doing all the damage. And he just decided to, you know, well, I can go, go do this as Lionel Richie, or you know, and. Uh, Looks like he made the right choice, but I mean, they, 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 he can't write a bad song. He's he, to me, he's he's a very very similar in the way, uh, you know, a Barry Gibb or a, you know, a, you know, yeah, just, yeah. just just seem to 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 write. You know, like we've heard, I, I know you have. Uh, we've heard a ton of Bruce Springsteen songs. We're kind of like, eh, you know, and he writes such inc- epic, you know, lyrics, and he's so he's just endless. He's one of those kind of Tom Petty like writers to where he doesn't. And take a breath. He just he can just keep writing it, but he has written some songs that you kind of go, well, "Why did you do that?" But I yeah. just I haven't heard yeah. Lionel Richie or uh, Barry Gibb do, you know. Yeah, remember we were when we were, we tried or attempted listening to the first couple of Bruce Springsteen albums. <laughs> and it was a couple tours ago. It was, I think it was last year because we've been listening to his autobiography. And I was like, I'm really because I've been we've been hearing him talk about these songs for a few hours on the <laughs> in his self read autobiography audio book. So I'm really curious about hearing this. We, I think we lasted maybe two, two and a half songs or something. Like, oh god, not that it was terrible. It's just it's not easy listening, and it's like okay. he, he was so a diamond in the rough as a songwriter in his early career. It's amazing what he accomplished, and it was through sheer just hard ass work. He just did not take a take a rest in his early career. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he ever has, but he 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 got better later. Like some of his his later songs, that he was doing by the time you get to the '80s. Um, you know, brilliant disguise and all that stuff. Yes, yeah. miles above the, his earlier stuff, I think. But the, again, the, the 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 hardcore Bruce Springsteen fans would would disagree, I'm sure. Right, because yeah. the, those early songs were so Dylan esque. Is that they, they they were they were these tapestries of of just so deep and so you know from every different angle, it meant something else, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so, so it was quite extraordinary to listen to, but yeah, being, and being stuck in a van and expecting stuff like, you know, like Badlands or, or, you know, something, <laughs> you know, that, the, you know, the river or you want, yeah you know, then to hear that stuff is kind of like, if, if I wanted poetry, you know, sung to me poorly, I, I you know, I could. You know. well, but, but, yeah. I mean, when you're listening to a song, it's like a lot of his early stuff was like that. You're, you're listening to it and going, okay, I'm waiting for a hook. Where, yeah. where is it? It's just like, yeah. I got him out of this. You're like, wait. You're like, it's like trying to get a word in edgewise in a conversation. I beg your pardon, but yeah. then the song's over. Like, what yeah. the fuck? So, so I guess nobody did, nobody got a job and they all died. Is that the, okay, next? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just not my bag. Yeah, you say like Dylan fans. I, 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 I love a lot of Dylan stuff too, but I, Typically, just don't have the patience to listen to. <laughs> yeah, so, there's like a handful of, of his early stuff that I think is really, really great, but you'll almost never catch me listening to it. Yeah, he, so. yeah, that's that's and, and and from from what I've heard of his the 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 people that have seen his shows recently too have been yeah, let's not do that again. You can't really sing anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. he's he's that's to no no fault of his own. I mean, he's he's nearly died a couple of times. Art related issues, I think. So, speaking of nearly dying, we should nearly kill this. Yeah, I think we're, put these this, people this, out of misery. We know we would be this talkative at uh, at midnight on but Cyber it's Tuesday. Only, it's only Tuesday yeah. morning. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> no, but yeah, so we, we're we are um, so it's near nearing the end of October, 
And uh, I do, I do want to mention to you, we're going to have a young fellow named Dennis O'Carroll on yes. the on the show coming up. Uh, young fella lives in Florida. He's from Ireland, and he's also in charge of the the tour that will be happening this time next year. And we are ecstatic to have him on here. We're just going to talk a little bit about the route. We're going to talk a little bit about the venues and uh, what's coming up and stuff like that. So you don't want to miss that. We're also going to have finally get young Turbo and uh, Miss Heidi on here as well, because it's mm -hmm. been a while since we've seen all four heads together. So I want to do that. And then also just, you know, I, I know you're taking notes. I know, uh, I know you're at home diligently taking notes, but, uh, this week, you can catch us at Dry Creek on, on Friday and Saturday, O'Bannon's in College Station. And next month in November, we're doing College Station again uh, at O'Bannon's. And Heidi will be joining us for one show only. And we'd like to invite you now to make plans for then because it's going to be something you're going to tell your kids about. Because... Yeah you will probably need them to bail you out of jail once we're finished with that. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. Yeah, it is. And uh, we, we got, we got some other stuff we're working on. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. I will say, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Uh, and, uh, yeah. What? Nothing. Yeah. I'm, Parker. Not, I'm not going to say another word. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> but anyway yeah so uh yeah you know i want to i want to thank you all for listening i want to uh, beg you to subscribe because we're, like i said last week we're nearly up to five subscribers which is gonna be great <laughs> so, i told my mother we had six so uh um, yeah do that and then also uh we always thank and we appreciate all of you especially our patreon subscribers and also the big 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 month in november because not only are we having you know, Heidi, join us in College Station, but we're also having one of our favorites here on SlapperCast. So keep it dialed in. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, come see us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got some, uh, we've got some good stuff in the works. I'm excited about it. And just uh, if I don't see you before, I want to say happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Cheers, y'all. <laughs>